Welcome to my top five Pokemon card investments of all time. In this video, I'll be showcasing some of my most profitable Pokemon card purchases and sharing the stories with you guys. It's also a dream of mine to hit 1 million subscribers on this channel. So if you could please subscribe, that'd be awesome. You can change your mind at any time. And if we hit 10,000 likes on this video, I'll show you my worst Pokemon card investments of all time as well. First up, we have an honorable mention that didn't really make it to the top five. This is a Shining Legends Mewtwo Secret Rare, AKA the Test 2. Mewtwo. I purchased this on the 27th of September 2019 for £169 and the most recent sale in the PSA 10 is around £400 which means I made a profit of around £231 on this card. Now a quick disclaimer before we do get into the rest of these cards today. I haven't really in my Pokemon card collecting years invested in Pokemon cards. I've simply collected Pokemon cards and bought cards that I liked and enjoyed and wanted in my collection. Only recently have I been a little bit more aggressive in my purchases in terms of looking to make a profit and that's mainly because of Pokemon Pokeran.net and looking to get stock for the website. Also, it's worth noting and pointing out that these cards are not stored in my home location. These cards are all stored at different storage locations. I simply took them out of storage for this showcase and for this video. And also, every single card you see here was purchased either in 2019 or early 2020. And it's not hard to make a profit if you bought cards back then, just because of how the market has reacted recently. So please keep that in mind. But with that being said, let's get into the top five. So in fifth place in this video, we do have a really cool card. This is a a Japanese Expedition Blastoise PSA 10. First edition as well. However, in Japan, a lot of the first editions are more common because they printed to demand better than the English sets. I bought this card on the 22nd of May 2020 for £102. And today, the most recent sale was £468, which makes a profit of £366. Now, what's special about this card is I didn't purchase it to fit in any collection. Like I wasn't collecting Japanese Expedition. I just saw this card. The artwork is absolutely fantastic. It's a great Pokemon, a classic Gen 1 starter. And because of that, it was a no brainer for me because if it does go down, I'm still happy that I've got such an amazing card in my collection. So for me, it was a win-win. Next up is a really unique card and another Japanese Pokemon card. This is the gold Reshiram and Charizard card. Now, currently, this card is very special because this card is exclusive to Japan and exclusive to Tag All-Stars. Yep, that's right. So far, this card is yet to be translated and released in the English TCG. And it's also possible that now we've moved into the Sword and Shield era and we're dealing with the V and V Max cards, they may never actually translate this over to English because, of course, it was released in the Sun and Moon era and it is a GX card. Now, they might do, they might create a promo set at some point or a premium collection box, but we just don't know. And this purchase was a no-brainer at the time because it ticks multiple different boxes. It's a unique and potentially exclusive to Japan card. It's a Charizard card and you can't really go wrong buying Charizard in Pokemon. It's gold and it looks awesome. <laughs> it's very rare to pull. I believe it's one to a case around one in 20 boxes to get a gold card or just a hyper rare in general from Tag All Stars. And then you've got to get this one, <laughs> you know. And last but not least, I really like it. So it ticks all these boxes, easy purchase. And I bought this card for just £104 on the 15th of March, 2020. And the most recent sale that I could find on eBay was £600 not too long ago, which takes us to a £496 profit. And I dare say, and again, this is not financial advice, I believe this card will most likely continue to increase, especially if it never gets an English translation. Next up, we have a real Really big card and let's just say we're turning the heat up now this is of course none other than the Typhlosion from Neo Genesis first edition and specifically the Typhlosion 17. In Neo Genesis, there are two Typhlosion. This right here is the rarer or harder to grade one because there are only nine Typhlosion first edition cards to ever get that PSA 10 grade, which is just incredible. Now this card was subject to a ridiculous amount of hype. Luckily for me, I was buying this card before the hype or the wide hype started to kick in. I've always loved this card. Neo Genesis is my favorite set of all time. And to prove that and show you why this card means so much to me, take a look at my old school binder from when I was just six years old. This is my exact binder from when I was a kid. And here we go. This is my original first edition Neo Genesis complete set. I was only missing one card, in fact, and that was the first edition Lugia. I could never get that card as a kid, but I did have both Typhlosion and I really wanted to use this card, Typhlosion 17, in my deck when I was playing at my local Pokemon club. But my mom was really against me taking cards out of my binder and playing with in decks. So she told me if you take a card out, you have to put a piece of paper inside the folder with the card on it so that as soon as you are finished with it, as soon as you've taken it out of your deck, you can put it back into the folder where it belongs. And as you can see, I did just that. This is my literal handwriting when I was around six or seven years old. And I can't tell you how much this piece of paper means to me. It's probably one of my most expensive collection pieces in terms of sentimental value. And it's just a little piece of paper. Will PSA grade this? <laughs> I don't know. However, sadly, the first edition Typhlosion that I had as a kid wasn't in the best condition. It was it was mint condition, don't get me wrong, but it was off center a little bit. So it did end up grading an eight at PSA. However, in 2019, I was actively picking up a few of these cards and hopefully get a higher grade than what I currently own. And like I said, this was 
just before the general widespread hype caught on from this card, I believe. So I ended up buying two of these, okay? I bought one for £221, which was this card right here on the 3rd of September 2019. And the most recent sale of a PSA 9 Typhlosion First Edition, which was £3,719, which worked out at a £3,498 profit, which is awesome. However, like I said, I actually bought two at the time and the other one that I bought, I only paid £57 for and that card also graded a 9. And also for context, I bought both of these raw, by the way. So I bought them completely raw and then graded them myself. Both came back 9, so we're looking at around 3,700, 3,900 profit for each of them, which is absolutely fantastic. However, one of the cards is currently not with me. I actually sent it back to PSA with graded gem for a regrade. I think this card is perfect. I can't see any print lines on it. I can't see any issues with the border on the back of the card. The only downside is it has a red ink block on the card. However, there has been Typhlosion 17s to get a 10 with that same red dot. Most notably, TCA Gaming's aka Rusty. And it's also rumored that four or five other cards to get the 10 also had that dot. So we did send that information back to PSA. Fingers crossed. It's a long shot, but it would be absolutely unreal. And it would be the most treasured card in my collection if it gets that. Next up, we have two cards, but I'm counting this as one because I purchased them around the same time. And these are from the same set as the Typhlosion. And of course, they are two first edition PSA 9 Lugias from Neo Genesis. Possibly, potentially, I think it is my favorite card of all time. And I mean, just look at these. Absolutely beautiful, stunning cards. And the condition of both of them is fantastic. And like I said a minute ago, I didn't actually have these cards in my childhood collection. It was the only card, the only card from my entire first edition Neo Genesis set that I didn't have as a kid. So I was actually looking for it for a number of years, spanning from like 2016 when I first got integrating. At the time, I believe it was around 250 pounds. And I thought that's just too much to, to buy. Then it went up to 500, 600, 700, and I still didn't pull the trigger. I ended up paying for these cards right here 1448 on the 20th of july and 2000 pounds on the 7th of july so i got two in one month just because i thought the price was fantastic actually and it was a card that it's my favorite card of all time damn it and i was actually really annoyed that i kept letting this card slip away from me i said to myself you know what randy make sure you just secure this card don't keep waiting for it to go up whatever the price is go and get one otherwise you'll forever be kicking yourself and i can tell you if i didn't make that purchase or these purchases i would have done just that because the last sold price of this card right here was 5100 pounds which means a 3100 pound profit on this card right here and then a 3652 pound profit on this card right here and again i know we all think our cards deserve a better grade right but one of these cards in my opinion could get the grade let me show you so this lugia right here is off center a little bit you can see the top and the left is a little bit thicker than the right and the bottom you can also see a few bits of scratches on it as well however i'm not sure if that's on the actual card or the case itself because this card was shipped to me without a plastic sleeve on it i do keep it in one i just took it off for this video however this card right here has much better centering than the first by far and again you can see a few scratches but this scratch right here is on the card itself and the rest again i'm not sure if that's the case or if that's the card itself if it's the card itself then i'm happy to admit defeat but honestly i'm really not sure what i'm going to do is i'm going to clean this case i'm going to scrub it with some plastics i think it is try and remove all the scratches from the case and then have another look because as you can see the back is flawless no nicks whatsoever completely perfect it just depends on these scratches right here and it's always been my goal to get a PSA 10 first edition Lugia. That is my dream card, my holy grail, my personal holy grail. At the time, I estimated the 10 to be around 15 to 20,000 pounds. However, as we saw recently, one sold for $129,000, which was a world record. And then last month sold for $70,000, which equates to around 50,000 pounds. And I'm just not prepared to spend that amount of money on one card, especially when my nines look this good. With that being said, if I can get one regraded and if it has got a chance of getting a 10, I'll do it, you know? And here we go, guys, the final card of this showcase video. I'm sure most of you who've been watching the channel for a while will know what this card is. Of course, it is the Skyridge Crystal Charizard PSA 10. I actually didn't buy this card PSA graded and I also didn't buy it as a single card. This was at the time my biggest purchase ever at £11,700 and it was an entire binder of the complete master Skyridge collection including all the crystals, all the reverse holo crystals, all the hollows, all the reverse hollows, and all the commons and uncommons. I can remember at the time Laura and myself bidding on that card and my heart was pounded. I've never been so nervous. I've never been so anxious at a auction ever. And looking back we actually did really well out of this purchase. Obviously, because the Charizard, the main card from that binder, did come back a gem mint 10. And even the reverse holo crystal Charizard came back a 9 as well, which is awesome. And the last sale of this card in a PSA 10 just a few days ago was £15,000. Which means I've already made a £3,300 profit on the entire binder with just one card from that binder. With the rest of the hollows still to come back from grading, all the reverse hollows still in my binder, and all the other crystal hollows and reverse hollows too. Being honest, those didn't grade too well. The Celebi reverse holo got a 6, so I was super lucky that the Charizard got a 10. But even still, to have this amount of 
profit already without even having the rest of the cards back yet is a great success and i'm sure this card will continue to rise in the future and i probably would say this was the first purchase that i ever made that was a actual investment if you know what i'm saying or a risk at least i did buy it for my collection like skyrim is one of my all-time favorite sets even as a kid and i wanted it in full it was a very easy way to get the whole set at once so my mentality was again if it isn't worth it you know if i haven't made money on it if it isn't a great purchase at least i have a full scourge set which has been a goal for mine forever and no matter what the condition is no matter what the value is i'm still going to cherish that but again i was incredibly lucky the market went up the cards were in good condition and actually made my money back well i haven't made the money back yet but at least i have it in value across the entire binder so there we go guys that is the end of this video i really hope you did enjoy it don't forget to leave a like on this video if you did 10,000 likes on this video and i'll show you my worst purchases of all time it's not always green and positive you see in the pokemon world there are mistakes that i've made as well be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this i'll see you guys tomorrow for some more pokemon content but for now though take care and peace out